Let's just raise our hands towards heaven. The Spirit gives life. 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 Holy Spirit gives life. He gives life. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We declare this a place of liberty tonight. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. There's a great breakthrough anointing. It's going to flow and it is flowing into this place. You'll be drenched in His anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. His presence is enough. More than enough. Father, tonight, we've not come here to seek any man. God, we've come to seek you. So we thank you for the wind of the Spirit in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We roll up that red carpet for you. We say welcome. We want to operate in hospitality towards you, Holy Spirit. We minister unto you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's give the King of Kings, to whom all praise and honor and glory is due, a clap and a shout. Amen. Amen. Just want to thank uh, Sister Ann. I've been hearing about this Ann Clausen and uh, Freedom Worship team or band. Ben, Brother Dave here in the back. Amen. Praise God. Let's give Dave a big God bless you as well. Amen. Is, is there a meeting here tomorrow night? There's the young. Oh, the wildfire. They're on fire. Hallelujah. We're on fire. Why don't we just reach out our hands into the supernatural by faith. Father God, we thank you that everything you want us to have, God, we will receive tonight. Some of you are going to be so marinated, intoxicated, baptized in Holy Spirit. You're not even going to recognize yourself. In a good way, you're going to be as drunk as a skunk. Hallelujah. So I want you just to tip back your head, tip back your barrel, and drink. And drink, and drink. Go, 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 go. Hallelujah. Drink of that new wine. The Bible says take huge drafts of the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18. We drink, Lord. We drink, we drink. Hallelujah. I'm taking a little slower here tonight. You say I just go right into it, but I want to have everything that heaven has here tonight. Amen. And I believe in a good way, this is in a good way, some of you are going to be radically electrocuted tonight. Like when we stick in a power cord into uh, an outlet, power comes up. Amen. And so it's not a bad thing. Amen. It's a good thing. Flesh burns up, but we're ignited. We're, and so I really believe this place here. Somebody say, I am, I am. the righteousness of God righteousness. in Christ Jesus. Christ. He loves me he loves with an everlasting love. An everlasting love. Tell your neighbor, he loves you he loves with an everlasting love. But I believe that tonight this place is a lightning rod for God. See what a lightning rod does? It receives power from heaven and brings it down to the ground. Yeah, that's right. I, I wish somebody heard me here tonight. And so God wants to see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Here tonight, there shall be a detonation for the glory of God. If you're happy and you know it, shout amen. God is good and he is good all the time. Tell your neighbor, I am not ready for more of the same. SOS, same old song, same old Sunday, same old service.
God is releasing dunamis. I, I want to start ministering already, but I'm going to contain myself as much as I can till the end. But you are going to receive, some of you will be electrocuted by the Spirit in a good way. This is a lightning rod for God, and God desires prairie fires by His Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled Filled, everybody say filled with His Spirit. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, I believe verse 5, He said, not many days from now you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That word baptized is from an ancient Greek word baptizo, which means literally to pickle, to marinate, to soak, to immerse. God wants every part, every fabric of your being to receive the necessary rule of the Spirit so that when life pushes you against the wall, all that oozes out of you is the nature of Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah! I'm getting ready to run. This is your daughter. She's passion with a microphone. Amen. That's what you can describe her. Passion with a microphone. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say it. Just reach out your hand again. You got you to just receive by faith. I am ready for more, God. And right now we reach out to the supernatural. In the name of Jesus, Father, we say your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. One more time, let's stand and give God a glory. The Bible says in Psalm, I believe it's 88, everybody in this temple shouted glory. Glory. Shout, come on.
near London, Ontario. Amen. So you ready? Everybody ready? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Are you ready? So start at the back, and it's a wave. So the person... They've never done this. Yeah, we go. Hey, go, go. <laughs> no, declare it. We say it in Jesus' name. Yes. <laughs> Try that again. Amen. Sit down. Amen. You're going to get a little better for it. Let the release of the glory be released from the back. Okay, go ahead. Hallelujah. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Shut it, don't take it. Jesus, mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more shout unto God. Glory. All right, you heard me, folks, for God in the front. You can be seated. As long as you can. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 As long as you can. Amen. Hallelujah. So is anybody here hungry for God? Yes. Yes. Anybody here hungry for God? I believe the move of the Holy Spirit is cracking open. I really do. Amen. I really do. I really do absolutely, absolutely believe that. That God is striking matches and He's He's doing that in this place. He's begun, He's continuing. But there is a move of Holy Spirit breaking out in this place. For the glory of God. Yes. And it's going to ignite towns and little hamlets and villages all over this place. And you won't even recognize some of your neighbors. You won't even recognize some of your family members. Because when the Spirit of God comes upon us, according to 2, 10, 2 Samuel 10, 6, we are changed into another person. Amen. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Now I want to just mention a few things. My, we are we are really low on material resources, but as much as you can get, go for it. One of them is a book called Canada Book of Decrees or Prayers. A decree is a, is a bold prayer. So Canada Book of Decrees and Prophecies, and it was compiled by Fatin Grzeski. And about 15 or 16 that different national leaders wrote 31 prayers. It ended up being 32 prayers. You know, it was supposed to be 31, ended up 32, but one for each day of the month. Then you can be a part of praying through God's dream for Canada. God has a dream for the nation of Canada. So we were asked to do a couple of prayers. One is on the revival of the Word of God. The other one was signs and wonders. But listen to these prophecies over our great nation. you got to reach up your hand. Come on. Hallelujah. Just pray in the Spirit for a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This was in 1776 from the Puritan Reformers. The Light and the Glory by Peter Marshall records a 1776 prophecy for Canada. Around 1776, this prophecy was given by the Puritan Reformers when the British Empire loyalists turned north to settle in Canada in order to remain under British rule. When zealous Americans sought to persecute them because of this decision, the Spirit of the Lord spoke through their prophets saying, Do not hinder these people. Let them move to Canada. Do not seek to incorporate the land of Canada into America. I am in the independence of America from Britain and will mightily use this country, but Canada. Somebody say, but Canada. Canada. But Canada. <laughs> Somebody say, but Canada. Canada. Oh, glory to God. You know when you say, I'm not quite done that yet, but you know when you say something, let's say somebody makes a meal and you say, this is an amazing meal, but. Yes. And then you make some comment on it. That isn't so good. It literally wipes out all the compliments you just said, right? Yes. See, people are looking at Canada and saying, Canada is the frozen chosen. Yes. What can come out of Canada? But I'm telling you, yes. but Canada. Yes. Come on, show yes. It says, but Canada has been reserved by me for the last days for a Special word. Yes. Oh, glory. Now, are you ready for this one? <laughs> Listen to this one. Everybody say 2006. 2006. This guy named Alistair Petrie wrote this. He said, God years ago said to many saintly people in Canada, the time will come when a revival will come to your land. 
that will be a hundred times more powerful than all historical revivals to this date put together. God is striking a match in this great nation. Healing, reconciliation, and destiny are very clearly the hallmarks of why this nation exists on behalf of all the other nations of the world. Amen. Somebody shout out Canada. Yeah. Shout. 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 Be. Be. Say. Say. Glory to God. How many believe that? Canada. Yeah. Shout. 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 Be. Be. Say. Say. Canada. Yeah. Shout. Shout. Be. Be. Say. at the back, alright? And then, oh good, we have it up here. This CD uh, was recorded live at Women on the Front Lines in Toronto at Catch the Fire. It wasn't their event, but it was held there. And there were over 1,500 worshippers. It captured a moment in God's presence. And, and my wife was a worship leader. When, she, when she, we were going to make the CD, she said, let's do a thousand copies. Everybody say, intense moment of fellowship. <laughs> you know what an intense moment of fellowship is? Yes. It's a Christian word for fuck, okay? So intense moment of fellowship. I said, we better just stick with 500. So we did 500. 500 basically sold out within a little over two months. Somebody say, listen to your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they are on iTunes. So Sean, uh, and, and if you don't want a song that kicks the devil out of your house, like that kind of music, don't start with track one. Start with track three or four. But don't start, do not start with track one if you don't want to kick the devil out of your house, okay? <laughs> or wherever else in your community. So it's Shawnee, C-H-A-N-I, Sloss, S-L-O-S-S, -S, and you can find it on there on YouTube's, uh, YouTube's. What's that? That's a combination of YouTube and iTunes. Amen. It's on iTunes. Amen. Glory to God. But it's just really to ignite and uh, and, and just stir. Just I don't know, you can use it for your devotion, whatever else. Or dad, what's it called? Daytime with daddy, you call it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just say, God, grant each one here a spirit of wisdom and revelation to know you better. Yes. The eyes of our heart being enlightened, God, yes. to know the hope of your calling and the glorious riches of your inheritance in the saints. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout out, shift. Shift. There's a shift taking place here by God's spirit. This place I declare tonight, a lightning rod for God. In the name of Jesus. There are sometimes it literal, and I don't look for this first and foremost, I look for God. But there are sometimes that there are literal manifestations over buildings. It, just like the Azusa Street Revival in 1906, a few times they would have the fire department come because they thought there was a fire over the building. But there was no fire over the building. It was a supernatural fire from heaven. Amen. You can't put out a supernatural fire from heaven. Religion tried to put out supernatural fire from heaven, it cannot do it. The devil tried to put out a supernatural fire from heaven, it cannot, he cannot do it. Hallelujah. Woo! Tradition tried to put out a supernatural fire from heaven, and it cannot stop it. Because the fire of God is contagious. Woo! So as I was praying today, I get this word, deluge and whirlwinds. Deluge and whirlwinds. And he said, release that word tonight. Everybody know what a deluge is? It's a massive outpouring. Yeah. Some people say, you know, we had a deluge of rain tonight. It was like a little sprinkle. That's not what a deluge is. A deluge is a massive outpouring. In the name of Jesus. How many are ready for a massive outpouring of God's spirit on your life? And see it change. So I want to get this exactly right. A deluge is a mighty outpouring. God has prepared us for floodgates. God has prepared us to open the floodgates. Did He not promise a great outpouring? Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes, then why are we settling for a little wee bit when God has called us to step into a massive outpouring of His Holy Spirit? Yes. How many of you ever heard of the of Pentecost? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Pentecost was a spring or is a spring feast to the Jews. It means 50th. 
And it was the harvest that was taken in, or is taken in, after the early rain. Which is like, it's not the latter rain, it's an early rain. So they take the harvest in, the first fruits, the beginning of harvest, after the early rain. And it's a one day feast. Now watch this. In the fall, there's what there's a seven day feast because the harvest is so abundant. And it's because the, 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 the harvest has just received a latter outpouring of rain. And the latter outpouring of rain is much greater than the early rain. Everybody say early rain? Early rain. Latter rain. rain. Now catch this. This is awesome how God speaks these things to us. On the day of Pentecost, you know what? All of a sudden the church was birthed. Holy Spirit came into that upper room, which was like a womb of the Spirit. And 120 people walked out, and 3,000 people were saved when they walked out of the upper room. Wow. Then that afternoon, Peter and John were going to the, the temple, and at the gate beautiful, they saw a man that was crippled, and they said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And another 5,000 people were saved that afternoon. That's 8,000 people on the first day. Wow. Now catch this. Catch this. That is just, that, not just, that is Pentecost, a one day feast. In the book of Isaiah, it says in the last days, the last of the last days, that the sun will shine seven times greater. It's not speak, speaking of the physical sun. It's talking about the Son of God. It's talking about Jesus. So there is an outpouring coming. Just like the day of Pentecost was a one day feast. There was a feast called Sukkot. You don't have to memorize all these words. There's no test. But there was a feast called Sukkot. Which was a seven day feast. Because of the massive harvest. Because of the latter rain. There is a move of God's Spirit that's not coming, it's begun. And it's seven times greater than the day of Pentecost. Seven times greater. Psalm chapter 133, it says there that the anointing runs down Aaron, the beard of Aaron. Aaron was anointed once a day. Aaron the priest was anointed once a day for seven days. Seven times. God's people will walk in a seven-fold anointing. <laughs> what does that mean? That means what you're doing now, you're stepping into more. Yeah. You're stepping into more. Peter, you know, when he first began to lay hands on the sick, if you remember, it was really long. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's a, that's a pretty long prayer. A few chapters later, he's not saying anything. His shadow is healing people. Because we move from glory to glory to glory. Oh, come on. Shout hallelujah. You've gone too far to go back where you came from. Come on. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Bless the name of Jesus. Everybody say, tell you to know pouring. All right, it says, this is Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, this isn't the main thing I'm reading but, uh, tonight, but I do want to start with this. Isaiah 42, it starts off in verse 1. Isaiah 42, talking about Jesus, it says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. Then it says in verse 2, he will, he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. This is powerful. Verse 3, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In other words, when a person is going through a time when they're being broken and you're coming out of something and coming into something that you yourself don't even completely understand, God is in a place, He says, I will guide you and I will be gentle to you. I will not, if, if something's just kind of smoking, God is not the type to snuff it out. If something is bended, it says here, you know, a bruised reed, He will not break. Or a bended reed, He's not going to break. 
because he knows it needs mending. And much of you, many of you have come out of situations where you were, you feel like you've come out bruised. You've come out bruised in your soul. You come out bruised in your emotions. You know, you feel like you've come out bruised. But God says, He will not, a bruised reed, He will not break. God is a good God. Amen. And He's a loving, heavenly Father. Yes. And He has awesome plans for your life. Yes. I, I wish tonight I could just like sink this into you. Like... Like a, you know, like, um, what would you call it? Just a, 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 a special zap it into you. But I, I can't do it like that, you know. Some things are, though. Some things are, are caught. Yeah. Does that want to catch it? Yeah. 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 So, lightning rod. You know what? This is good. This is good. I want you, I just declare this. I am, I am a lightning rod. A lightning rod. For God. For God. Jesus came, died on the cross, rose again, that he promised to send his Holy Spirit. The book of Joel says this in chapter 2, verse 28. It says, And afterward I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Verse 29. Even on my servants, both men and women. If God was against women telling the good news, why was the first evangelist a woman? <laughs> Mary was the first one, not Mary the mother of Jesus. Mary that went to the tomb was the first one to tell the good news that Jesus is alive. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes we can't just read the Bible, we got to read the Bible. Yes. 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 Exactly. <laughs> and so then we got people telling us, you know, that's not what the Bible means. This is what it means. How would I just want to read the Bible and look at what it means? I don't need somebody to complicate it even worse. Yeah. It means what it says, and it says what it means. Right. If God didn't mean that, why did He say it? <laughs> and it says, I, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. So the outpouring in Acts chapter 2 came and it changed the spiritual landscape of Jerusalem. Amen. When an outpouring comes, a massive deluge, it will change landscapes. Yes, that's if you look at floods, floods can be very destructive. They will literally take a house off of its foundations. But see, the outpouring of God, the flood of God, when He opens the floodgates, which began on the day of Pentecost and is increasing in our day, it does not bring destruction, it brings life. Yes. And so what I'm saying is this outpouring will change the spiritual landscape. I'm telling you, it's Canada's time. Yes. And it's Canada try no more. <laughs> it's Canada's not going to be known for being dry. You will not have to travel the world to get soaked by God's Spirit. Yes, amen. It's Canada's time. Amen. Woo! We are Canadian. Amen. Uh, I'm going to read this to you here out of Genesis 7. This is kind of, I wanted to give this here so you catch what I'm saying. But Genesis 7, during the flood of Noah, this is powerful. You're going to see how all this ties together. In Genesis 7, verse 8. It says Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters, that's the natural floodwaters. What I'm speaking of is the floodwaters of God's Spirit. Yes. And it says here, Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters came to earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. And then it says in verse 11, in the... In the, in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth. The fountains of the deep were broken up. God says our innermost being yeah. is like the deep. Yeah. And when your innermost being is broken up, in other words, you recognize that you really need God. Yes. Yeah. You're crying out from you're hungry for Him. The Bible says deep calls out to deep. Yeah. Our spirit cries out to Holy Spirit. And the spirit and the bride say come. Yes. 
So when the fountains of the deep are broken up, it says right here that the floodgates of heaven were opened. Amen. And the floodgates of heaven here literally it flooded the earth. So uh, to us, these floodgates of God's Spirit opening up, their outpouring of God's Spirit will flood the earth. Yes. Not to bring destruction, but to bring the message of salvation through Jesus Christ yes. to every nation on planet earth. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And it comes when the fountains of the deep are broken up. The windows of heaven are opened up. When you're hungry for God, the windows of heaven are opened up. And when there's enough of a critical mass of people, gather there's enough here to shift the whole nation. When there's enough of a critical mass of people's deep crying out to the deep of God, the windows of heaven are released. And floodgates come. And there's a deluge of God's spirit. And you begin to prophesy. You begin to prophesy. You begin to say things. What am I supposed to say when I'm witnessing? You will prophesy. You will share what's in your heart. You will share how you got saved. You will share what God is doing in your life. It's not something you have to necessarily first and foremost think about. It flows out of you like rivers of living water. Yes, that's right. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I went up one time... Well, to get my mother when I was living back, you know, when I wasn't even married at the time, living at home, going to university, I went up to a, a drugstore to get my mother something, and there was there was this few youth that were standing outside, you know, teenagers. I would have been maybe 20 at the time, ish, 20, 21 maybe, and I, and I just began to share with a few of them, and all of a sudden this crowd gathered around of young people. And this one guy, not even saved, steps out as I'm talking about the goodness of Jesus. He steps out and says, my grandmother was healed in a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. Testifying about the healing power of Jesus, and they're not even saved. I didn't have to have somebody give a testimony. God brought somebody out. And we got to share. It just gathered. And then this guy comes up with a van, you know, one of those vans that, I, I, I don't know, I've never seen it before, never seen it since, but it had stickers all over his van, you know. You must be born again, you know. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. Right at that time, he steps out and hands all of a track. I was done. I shared everything that, you know, that it was at that moment, and, and then they just dispersed. And then I never saw him again. Could have been an angel. I don't know. It was a nice man with lots of stickers. <laughs> so in that place, I was now prepared that I'd be sharing with about, you know, 15, 20 youth. But right. God, God was ready because the Holy Spirit is our partner. Yes. He's our senior partner. Yes. Right. Oh, bless God. Everybody say deluge. Yes. Now, I want to go over this that next part, whirlwinds. In Zephaniah, if you can find Zephaniah in your Bible. Go to Matthew and hang a left. Zephaniah chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. It says here, listen to this. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. Our God rejoices over us with singing. This word here, rejoice, is one of the seven words for praise in the Bible. And it's the one, at least up to this point, the one that you will see the least in churches across our great nation till now. There's seven words, and this is the one I actually use the most. It's the word halal. And it means to jump up and spin about hilariously and twirl. And it says God does that over you. God will quiet you with his love and then he rejoices over you. And what that creates is a whirlwind. And we know that whirlwinds bring destruction. But when God rejoices over his people in gatherings like this... The whirlwinds of God do not bring destruction. As a matter of fact, they bring order. The praise of God brings 
order. Things that were chaotic, where there was sin, where there was sickness, where there was depression. When God sings over his people, praise brings order. Yes. Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Deluge and whirlwinds. Now, how many want this kind of lifestyle? Yes. Yeah. All right, go yeah. really quickly to Luke 5, and then I want to lay hands on every single person that breathes air. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 5. Glory, glory, glory. Show not among I. Let's just lift our hands up, just begin to pray in the Spirit. She tell her You are awesome, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. She His word tells us that the pain 